All right, so uh, good day to you, everybody. Um, well, actually, it is uh, September 5th, um, Wednesday, 2012. This is Thomas with uh, LibertarianProgressive.com. Um, We're doing interviews with independent third-party candidates, so people have more um, options and then um, more, uh, and, and then to be more informed. Um, and uh, now, today we're talking to John Barry, uh, and uh, John Barry is running for uh, Senate in the uh, state of New Mexico. Um, and so it's actually, you can learn more about John Barry at uh, J-O-N, not J-O-H-N, J-O-N, Barry, B-A-R-R-I-E, F-O-R, Senate.com, John Barry for Senate. Dot com and um, you probably just Google it, but it's that's the website. And uh, so, John, we usually ask people to ask them about their motivation um, first, um, and uh, what drives you. Uh, you know, tw 2012, I think, is going to be. Um, uh, it, I think the ingredients are there at least for an unprecedented year um, as far as electing independent third-party candidates. But please tell us a little bit about yourself and what motivates you, sir. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you have me. I appreciate that. You know, I, I have to uh, preface that I agree with you. This 2012 is going to be very critical, and I think the third-party movement is, is quite large. I'm a Vietnam veteran. Uh, my first career was aviation. Uh, presently, I'm a homeopathic practitioner. I've been doing that for 10 years. Uh, I'm just a citizen activist. I'm just one of the people and I've never had a political office, never been elected. I'm not a career politician. But, you know, I want a future for my grandchildren, your grandchildren, our children. And I know it sounds trite, but I want my country back. Yeah. I think Back from that, who? Back from who? Who has our country now? Well, I tell you, you know, that's interesting. What we've had is we have allowed our so-called elected representatives to steal our freedoms and our liberties away from us and drive us away from this wonderful thing called the Constitution. You know, our individual liberties and freedoms, they've been usurped terribly because we have not stuck to the United States Constitution. So when people ask me my motivation, I said, I want my country back the way it was intended by the Founding Fathers and the Constitution. So who's taking it away from us? We've allowed our representatives to tax us and tax us and tax us and get us in debt 16 trillion plus dollars and our government far exceed the limits of the constitution you know we have they have limited and enumerated powers and if you look at the con <laughs> the government right now it is what i call terribly out of control because our representatives instead of looking at us as individuals they're looking at a collective something yeah, and I'm yeah. not happy with it. <laughs> uh, they're looking at a collective money tree or, or something like that. Uh, yes. I mean, all, that $16 trillion is going to um, foreign countries. It's going to uh, special interests. It's going to, um, you know, uh, TSA x-ray scanners at, at, at the airports. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's going to, to everything but, um, y you know, the p p people that it should be going to. I mean, yeah, we need a massive transfer of wealth. Yeah, we need to get our country back, John. I think you're absolutely right. So, um, let's go through some issues like uh, foreign policy, the military, um, you know, that whole um, thing there. Uh, what, what do you think about that, especially as a veteran and, um, and, uh, and, and just, you know, just being an American citizen, too? Well, uh, you know, I, I like to to talk about specific things that we've gone wrong. And well, how about, um, like, you know, the whole Middle East um, and, and, and around yes, there? That, yeah, Central you know, Asia. let's talk about Afghanistan because it's a, it's a sore point for me. My brothers and sisters are being killed 7,000 miles away, killed, maimed, and so on. And uh, we have been, for instance, in Afghanistan longer than it took to fight two world wars. To me, that's ludicrous, and it's six, 7,000 miles away from the shores of the United States of America. We need to put the United States of America first. You know, we're patrolling borders in Afghanistan, but the borders here in New Mexico and the United States, they are not being patrolled. Isn't that important, so, the borders? I mean, um, uh, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but like, I, I think Iraq, we shouldn't have gone in there in the first place, but, but if we did go in there, um, you know, we should have we never really guarded the borders real good in, in that conflict. Um, and uh, 
Uh, and but but anyways, I might not, I might be totally wrong on that. That's just my observations from the the limited information that I get from the news. You know. Well, here's the thing: when the United States is attacked or infringed upon by anybody or anything, we're supposed to fight back, win, and then come home. You go kick their butt, okay? That's what we do. Then we come home. But what's happened is we're staying there. You know, we've been in Korea for 60 years. Yeah, I mean, I, it's like come on. a permanent place there. there in West Germany. We have 190 bases or something like that, about 190 around the world. No, no, no. It's a... <laughs> You, you, you're, you're, it's Please. more than that. Oh, We're in 140 nations, oh. Oh. plus 140 plus nations, in over 700 locations. In other words, we have military presence in over 700 locations in over 140 nations. That's not protecting the United States it's of America totally. Yeah. It, 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 well, look at the expense. Do you know how much we're spending a day in Afghanistan? $12 million or more per day. Uh, that's not sustainable, and it's not right. If we had those people and that money here in New Mexico and Texas and Arizona, look what that would do for the economy, and we'd have our own borders secure. Exactly, and that Democrat and Republican, you know, c conventions that were going on, we know who's going to be uh, uh, selected for that. I mean, they spent, um, if you include security, they spent like about $136 million. Um, just who's they, the Thomas? The Republicans and the Democrats. Um, Thomas, we, the United States Treasury gave each one of those corporations yeah. money from taxpayers, and I think it's unconstitutional for us to even pay for that. So when you say they, yeah, the party, but... We, the taxpayers, you're, you're put right. it that, you're, you're and that's right. not correct. No, you're you absolutely know? right. I, everyone says it like the government. So the government's supposed to be we, the people. I mean, we always say, like, the government does that like it's some separate entity, but it's supposed to be us. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, it's slip of the tongue. I'm going to start, you know, making yeah. a point every time I say that because that's an excellent point. So, like, so we got to get our government back just to the main thing, as you're saying. Now, um, how about, like, civil liberties? I mean, I know, you know, the people were scared. They passed the Patriot Act. I mean, that's that was a bill that was already written. No one had a chance to read it. Um, and, uh, it, you, you know, it, it violated it, – it, it was a lot of stuff that we didn't need because pretty much judges always give search warrants whenever it's needed. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and yeah. and uh, so, I mean, our Fourth Amendment is this kind of thing that we um, are supposed to be fighting for. I mean, uh, that's the kind of thing that makes, um, you know, inventors and stuff from other countries want to come to the United States because they know their, their intellectual property rights are going to be protected. They're not going to be illegally searched and seized. Um, and, and who knows what kind of special interest could play into that, too, to s steal, like, uh, corporate secrets and stuff like that. And, and, and just um, people's houses being raided in, kicked in without a warrant. Sometimes they go into the wrong house, they destroy everything, and Yes. You know, they or they kill they kill Marines like they did our uh, down in Florida. It, it, this is the kind of situation. Individual freedoms and liberties are supposed to be protected by the government, not taken away. You know, when you have foreign nationals attack us, uh, like 9/11, and then the next thing you know, we have uh, bills coming out of Congress that take our citizens' rights away. When these people that did, they weren't even United States citizens, and now we're how did we become the enemy? It, it is incorrect. You know, the Patriot Act, the majority of that was written even before 9-11. I'm sure you're aware of that. Yeah, it was. It's been tried. It was tried to be introduced in a Clinton administration and, and, yeah. and, and without the uh, heat of um, a wartime um, environment, Clinton yeah. said, there's no way I'm going to pass this because this violates the Constitution. Even Clinton said that, you know. Well, let's get down to what what the well, let's get down to what the people can do, what you can do, what I can do, yeah. and that is you elect representatives, senators, congresspeople, you elect those who will stand up for your freedoms, your liberties, who will limit the government, lower taxes, deregulate, in other words, do what representatives are supposed to. It is not the executive branch. Uh, the present branch, <laughs> the present president, has far exceeded his authority, but your, our representatives, have allowed him to do that. If I was a senator, I would never have let him give, excuse me, uh, amnesty to those uh, 16 to 30-year-old illegal immigrants. 
Well, I would have done something differently. There was only one voice spoke out in all 545 of them. Don't you think that that's something that the American people need to say, enough's enough. Let's elect somebody who has the integrity to stand up and say, you can't do this anymore. Oh, I, I, I'm with you. I, I think um, there's, um, I know this, I know the Congress has a 10% approval rating. They've had about that same approval rating for a while now. I know the media has about 17% approval rating, although I'm not saying there isn't bad or good people in the media. Um, some of them are probably good people, and, and a lot of them are starting to wake up. I, I think um, right now there is the majority of people who identify themselves as independents, um, and, and that's um, on the record, um, not Republicans or Democrats. I think the uh, environment is... Um, time right now i think it's going to come it's going to be a shot heard around the world I, I don't think you know i think this is um you know i think this uh our u.s constitution is fully armed and operational we are democratically re elected republican now it's time to witness the power of this and you know what um here's another what about um and so I think this is a year, John. I think you're right. I think that's the thing that's going to happen in 2012. It's going to be a November to remember. So those are some like little, uh, you know, slogans, but I, I think they're appropriate. Um, so what, what about hemp and, and, and industrial hemp? What about the drug war? What do you think about that? Let's see your stance on that. Well, the war on drugs needs to be eliminated totally because it's nothing but a money-making uh, uh, procedure for people that are involved in it. It obviously... If you're going to fight a war, you need to fight a war and win, and we haven't. Otherwise, we wouldn't have uh, poppy fields in Afghanistan, and we'd secure our borders and so on. So the war on drugs needs to be eliminated. So you're not a bought-out and sold-out person to the pharma industry. You, 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 yep. You're really able to stand up for the constitutional. To me, that's almost like, um, it, it, I mean, you could be against drugs. That's fine. It's just that if, if you're, you're able to stand up and say something like that, if you're able to stand up and say you're against the Patriot Act, I mean, that means that, um, you, you know, you're real serious. Well, the, the NDAA, for and instance, the NDAA. Section 1021. Uh, let me get back to something called hemp again real quick. Do yeah. uh, you know... If you study the history of why it was outlawed and why it wasn't, uh, it, and I don't, we don't have time to talk about it, but it was powerful lobbying to get the Congress to outlaw one of the greatest plants that God has given to us. Now, I'm not talking about the marijuana. I'm talking about hemp. The, you can eat the roots. You can feed people. You can clothe people. It has. Um, you can make everything that we need out of that is one of the greatest plants in the world. I always keep saying this. If there is, um, if you're going to genetically modify the perfect industrial plant to help you start a society, um, it seems like, I mean, that that it would be that. I mean, Henry Ford used it to make yes. actually um, plastic to, to make not just the gasoline, which he actually used um, heptane to, 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 to use ethanol for the car, but he also used it to make the doors, the trunk, the whole frame. I mean, it was one of the first, like, uh, partially hemp. You can make, um, like, a biodegradable plastic with it, which is strong enough where he, you know, can slam a hedge, sledgehammer into it and not even crack it. So, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's a, and, and it gets subverted because... Well, what happened, of course, is that, here again, we had special interests that our representatives allowed to say, oh, it, it, I go back to a simple thing like a light bulb. We have representatives who said, you know what, American people, the incandescent bulb is no longer good for you. You're going to have to have these things, the CFLs. And by the way, just because the incandescent bulb costs 50 cents and the other one costs $5, we don't care. Well, I wonder who's paying who for what because I'm smart enough to make a decision what kind of light bulb to have in my house. Yeah, and that now, now, now those other ones have mercury in them, so they're actually environmentally even worse. Oh, no, the CFL bulbs, if you break one of those and inhale it or get it cut or what have you, you're in trouble. Oh, yeah, make you sure know? your pets are away. Make sure your kids are away if, That's if correct. you break one of those. Actually, I personally like LEDs, but I did buy up a bunch of those other ones, and then you can just use a dimmer. But you know, you know what? Um, now that we're running out of time here, let me just um, ask two more questions real quick. Um, what, what's yes. um, some of your uh well what's some of your favorite past historical figures um it, it could be from you know any it could be someone you even don't like but it just someone you find interesting that's been on your mind it could be a politician not a politician what's well what, my favorite i have two favorite people one is uh, thomas jefferson uh i love him to death uh, he was his quote his his intelligence what he did for his country uh, i use him a lot i have another favorite who used to be the 
agriculture secretary in the Eisenhower administration. His name is Ezra Taft Benson. And he taught the proper role of government. In fact, he's got a little CD out called The Proper Role of Government. He had insight to teach us what would happen if we allowed government to get out of control. So those two people I use a lot in my thought process, my decision-making process. Of course, there's many more. You know, the founding fathers were great. But Ezra Taft Benson and uh, Thomas Jefferson, I use them all the time because they tell us the direction that we can go to get our country back. <laughs> That's it. Right. And now, John, I want to ask, is um, there anything else that I didn't uh, cover that I might have um, left out here that you'd like to convey? Yeah, there's, there's two things that's important to me. One is that I'm running not to enhance myself, and when I get elected, half of my salary will stay here in New Mexico for children with disabilities uh, because that's we, they get paid too much anyway, and it, we need to return to the people thing. And I'm committed to the people and not to enhance my self-worth. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that sounds great. And so what's next? What, what any um, uh, things that's next for you? Like, uh, do you have, uh, I guess you're going to be in the debates, right? Um, well, I haven't been invited yet because I have to get some polling and things like that. And, I wa you know, I had to fight this court battle to get on the, on the uh, ballot, which people can read about. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, I'm a grassroots campaign, so I need donations from everybody. Send me five bucks, three bucks, two bucks, one dollar, I don't care, because that's what it takes to win. Uh, I have a few hundred, and they have thousands and millions. So uh, because I had to fight that legal battle, I'm now faced with a lot of legal fees, because the Secretary of State decided not to put me on the ballot properly, and that was... Well, anyway, we won. And I'm on the ballot. There's three names, one choice. We can do it. All right, John Barry, J O N B A R R I E 4 F O R Senate.com. And uh, John, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking time on your busy uh, campaign schedule here um, for the great state of New Mexico. Even if you're not in New Mexico, if you don't, if you don't have a Senate race in your state this year. Um, you know, support John Barry. I mean, I'm I'm a fan of a couple of people like um, that aren't in my states, and doesn't mean I can't help support them. This is a national campaign. John is talking about issues like the NDAA, the Patriot Act, um, overseas, having a strong Second Amendment military, the Second Amendment. I mean, our whole Bill of Rights that is it, like on the verge of uh, being a you know endangered species act, and uh, it's it's uh, so we, we we this is the time to fight back. 2012, the time where the silent shopper, the uh, you, you know, just kind of like um, like like a woman in a relationship. Just once she decides it's over, it's over with the Democrats and Republicans. Um, you know, just let them go on and let's start. You know, with a new you know uh, wave of uh, candidates. That's what's going to happen this year. A, a wave of uh, independent third-party candidates will be elected to Congress. John, it's been great to talk to you. I'll say goodbye to you real quickly after this, and I hope you have a great uh, rest of the evening, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Thomas. It was a pleasure. Thanks.